So, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to this conference. When Noah boarded his ark a long, long time ago, he took an entire zoo with him. Looking around here, I can imagine what you are thinking. He should have taken a few startups with him as well. So, since the beginning of the industrial age, we have relied on fossil fuels, first on coal, then later on oil and natural gas. That age is now to an end, coming to an end. This was the one clear message that came out of the World Climate Change Conference in Glasgow. We will move away from oil, gas and coal in the coming decades. We will no longer fill up our cars with petrol, but instead charge them with electricity. We will no longer use oil for heating, but have alternatives such as heat pumps. New buildings will generate the energy they require, and planes will no longer fly on climate damaging kerosene, but use synthetic fuels. That sounds easy enough. In fact, decarbonization is a project that affects everyone's lives. Fossil fuels will disappear from numerous areas of life where they are now commonplace. CO2 is currently found in food, in toys and clothes, for example. These examples show that there is still a long way to go, but the decarbonization process has already begun and it will continue. The question is how we shape it. My responsibility as a Minister of Environment is to ensure that Switzerland emerges stronger from decarbonization. Because decarbonization means many things. First and foremost, however, it represents a huge opportunity. We must make sure that as many people as possible see this opportunity. And you, ladies and gentlemen, you are the ones who see these opportunities, who can take on leadership, who can play a decisive role in the coming years with your investments. I have visited several startups over the last few months. What I saw there impressed me. I visited a company that is developing carbon capture technology. Another is developing synthetic aviation fuels. A third company produces concrete that binds CO2. And a fourth startup is working on hydrogen-based solutions for energy storage. You probably know the names of these companies. Climeworks, Synhelion, Neustark, GRZ. It's companies like these that are moving us forward. We are proud of this Swiss expertise which produces solutions that we can export. That's why the NOAA conference is in the right place. Decarbonization it has a long tradition in our country. As many as 100 years ago, Switzerland began electrifying its railways. Our railways have been running on electricity for a long time. Other countries are only just beginning to electrify routes. Switzerland has also a lot to offer when it comes to moving decarbonization forward. I have mentioned some of the new players, but well-known giants such as ABB and Siemens have also been making progress with decarbonization for a long time, and they are demonstrating how to use energy efficiently instead of wasting it. The cleantech sector in Switzerland has developed much more dynamically than the economy as a whole in recent years. Our country has many innovative players in the cleantech sector. Cleantech patents in Switzerland have also grown strongly in recent years and our universities are constantly feeding companies with new ideas. If I, as a social democratic environmental minister, now sound like a liberal business minister, it is for a simple reason. Switzerland has the opportunity to lead the way in decarbonization 
and I want us to seize this opportunity. As we decarbonize, both the private sector and politics have an important role to play. You, ladies and gentlemen, you invest. You manage financial flows so that the investments made today do not become worthless securities sometimes in the future. Investments in fossil fuels no longer merely entail a reputational risk. There is much at stake. Someone who invests on a large scale in companies that develop new oil fields runs the risk of finding themselves sitting on a share package whose value goes down and down. Property portfolios that continue to rely on oil heating will also lose value over time. I don't think you need investment advice from a social democrat minister and former consumer protection agent. But what I am telling you here, you will also hear from representatives of the world's largest asset managers. And the brochures produced by major financial market players now read like an NGO's position papers. I am sure that even a totally inexperienced person selecting shares to invest in today would randomly pick out some clean tech companies. Politicians, meanwhile, need to take a more careful approach to promoting decarbonization. If we want to win the decarbonization, we must first and foremost involve the public. Politicians must create suitable conditions so that people can reduce their carbon footprint without additional inconvenience. This means investing in infrastructure and support for households. The Confederation will therefore invest around 2 billion Swiss francs over the next five years in heating system replacement and climate-friendly renovation. Expanding district heating networks is also a key part of this program. A week ago, people here in Zurich voted clearly in favor of expanding the district heating network. And in the mobility sector, charging infrastructure is needed. Here too, the Swiss Confederation wants to invest additional money so that people can charge their electric cars at home or at work. Local councils will also receive money to convert their bus fleets to e-buses. The Confederation is providing a lot of money for renewable energies. Our government aims to significantly boost the security of the country's power supply by expanding renewables. Decarbonization will only succeed if we produce more clean electricity right here in Switzerland. The conditions are certainly attractive. Persons investing in the expansion of renewables will now receive up to 60% of the investment costs from the state. Hopefully, that's good enough argument to do so. There has been a vast increase in the use of photovoltaics in Switzerland recently, which now compares favorably with other European countries. In 2020, we were in fifth place in Europe in terms of increase per capita. In ski racing, that would be too little. In the energy sector, however, this is a great step forward. Ladies and gentlemen, the time when the clean tech sector was dominated by idealists and amateurs is long gone. The clean tech sector is a business case. Today's event is clear evidence of this. If countries want to emerge as a winner from the decarbonization project, it needs both the public and private sector. I would like to thank you all for your involvement and convey best wishes on behalf of the Swiss government. Thank you. Simonetta Somaruga, we have known each other for uh, many years. I think I have never seen a speech like this from you. you she, she really did, Klaus, sound like 
a minister of business, like a minister of economy, and not like a social democrat uh, who tries to go for green politics. I think that's the first impression I have. But let me start with, um, and thank you very much for being here. Let me start with Glasgow quickly. You played an important role in, in Glasgow, and there was a very special moment at the end of, of Glasgow where the president of, of the COP kind of had to fight with tears because in the last kind of minutes behind the scenes, obviously, uh, something happened uh, with the whole contract around coal. Can you, and you were in the media as well. Uh, several international uh, broadcasters pushed that there's kind of a conflict between you and India and China. Can you lift the curtain a little bit? What happened actually behind the scenes in those last minutes? Well, we, we, we were just a few minutes, I would say, before we had the final declaration to approve. And we learned that uh, uh, India and China wanted to change the text in the last minute. We had in the text for the first time that was in the text that the uh, world is phasing out of coal. And the world is phasing out also of the subsidies for coal and uh, oil and gas. And then India and China asked to change the text and to say not to phase out, but to phase down, which obviously is not the mm. same thing. So uh, there was a, a group of countries, uh, Mexico, Georgia, we have a, a special group uh, led, it, led by Switzerland, and we went to the presidency and we said we do not accept to change the text in the last minute and not to change the text in this way. But as you know, in Glasgow, the final declaration has to be approved by everybody. So we had to, to balance between, uh, well, we, we, we leave the declaration completely, which I must say, even the expectations were very high for Glasgow. Of course, we could not achieve that expectations, but uh, still we found, okay, when we have to, to, to choose between not having any declaration at all or have this declaration with phasing down coal and the subsidies also. So we, we took the floor, we were very angry. Uh, there were all the women speaking and uh, well we said we are very angry but we approved the text because I think in the end the declaration, the final declaration of Glasgow is, is extremely important for the market rules, uh, for having still the aim to add uh, 1.5 degrees and so we accept it and so yeah. the, thank you for, for lifting this curtain a little bit. The question is always if, if we look at Glasgow at the end of the day, is, is the glass halfway full or halfway empty? Um, how would you describe it? Well, as I said, the expectations were extremely high. And of course they are high because, uh, I mean, we need the solutions and we need them now. And we have to make the change now and to make the, the investments in, in the right way. But uh, at, the, at the same time, I have to tell you, when you are together with 200 countries with so different situations, I mean, when you talk to Marshall Islands, when you talk to Vanuatu, where they say the water is coming up, please do something. And then you talk to South Africa, uh, where 90% of electricity is produced by coal. So if you tell them, just go out of coal, I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of, of working places. So, I mean, the situation of each country is very different. Uh, and so I think, we have to do two things, to have the best rules possible in the world, but we have also our, our responsibility in our country. This is why I'm so engaged, but I think Switzerland is a country who can do a big thing in our country, but also have the, the technologies to export. And so I think you we are, have to do both. You are really very engaged, and let's not focus too much on Switzerland, but maybe Switzerland can be a role model for other countries. What is... What is um, uh, the role of a country in order to accelerate. You have been talking very much about investments, about business, about that. Uh, Klaus has mentioned it, the, the paradigm shift in the heads of the people is here. I think it now needs to be clear that there's a lot of value to be created, also economical value. What's the role of a country, of a government, in order to support that? Well, I think the government first has to make the, give security so that the investments, they can be sure. If we invest now, then it's clear for the next 10 years where we want to go. 
then I think what the country can do as uh, Switzerland is for the education uh, and universities. I, I spoke about the patents. I mean, to, to have really the, the innovation in your country. And then I think the, the third thing for our country is we are a big uh, financial place and we have a, a huge responsibility, but also a, 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 an opportunity if we get the right rules People want to invest in, in green finance, but they have to know what it is. And greenwashing, I think, is a, is a huge issue. And so if people now are ready to invest and they want to do it, so the financial place has to make sure that they, the investment goes in, in the right direction. And uh, this, I think there is still quite a lot of work. Not to sure do. if you have been able to see already, if you were already in the room and Klaus Hommelt had his speak, because there is actually enough money. The question is, can it actually go into venturing? Have, I'm not sure if you have seen his, his, his speech. I'm sorry, my train was late, so I just <laughs> so you came in here. You came by train and, and it was late, train, yes. which is unusual, by the way, for Switzerland. <laughs> Usually they come to the second, so this was an exception. So, so the question is the regulatory framework around, around the possibility of investing into, into, into venturing, I think, is not here at the moment. Insurances, pension funds, etc., cannot invest into into um, uh, venture capital, which is wrong because the, the, the ability to make money with it is here. Is that something you, you, you will discuss within the government? Yes, I, I think for us it's a, it's a huge issue. It's, uh, we have many startups in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. They get the money, they have the innovation, they have the universities that works quite or very well. And then for scaling up, you need more money. And there we have a problem. Yeah. Because banks do not know, does that work? In which direction will they go? Say they have not the, 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 the risk assessment they need. And as long as they do not have the, the, the know how, how the risks are, they don't get the, the big money they, which be used to, for scaling up. So we have a gap in there. And usually, and I don't like to see that, in Switzerland we have many startups, then they are bought by other countries, state funds something which Switzerland does not have. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to find a solution for this scaling up. And if you find the solutions here, I would be very I grateful to know about that. Klaus, I think this is one of the most fundamental points, and I've never heard somebody, Kriegel from the Swiss government, being so open in this question. The, 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 the um, comparison you did with the Mittelstand in Germany, that was risky money as well they invested, but it was the basis of the wealth of Germany today. So we are at this paradigm shift again, and I think if, if we hear this from you, Klaus, there is hope, and everybody in here, there is hope that the money that is here flows into the right pipes. Thank you so much for being here. Simonetta Somaruri was an honor. It was important to have a member of the government, especially Simonetta Somaruri here, because you all know we want to grow this NOAA the reset of Noah Marco, and we want to keep it in Switzerland, an innovation hub in this world. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.